Human beings are born narcissistic monsters. Narcissistic, inflated sense of self-importance. You will find plenty of them as you meet them every day. There is no exception. A lot of people act narcissistically in traffic. And if you pull them out of the car, they will be absolutely okay and normal. They have a lot of survival value as we all know that we are fighting to survive at this point of time when the pandemic has engulfed us and still the self-importance is of high, high, high degree. Standing in a queue to buy milk will oversee all of them, you know, keep yelling at the shopkeeper and wanting them to be served first. So it's like first me and then all. That mid-road conferences that we normally spot every day, a boy and a, and a girl, they would never mind anybody on the traffic. They are just must mala guys and girls, you know, on the road. Nobody, nobody to care for. Absolutely no bothering for anybody at all. Talking loud amidst a slow or a soft-spoken discussions. You'd find many of them, you know, coming out and absolutely not minding anyone speaking thing and speak loudly absolutely no bothering for anybody at all abruptly cutting off discussions they come they have their own say they'll not say anything called as excuse or may i please have something important to speak so will you stop they'll never be permissive in nature bossing over others all the time People never allow others to speak at all. At home, we cry when we are hungry. We don't even know or care to know that our mom might be sleeping or she might be busy doing something else. In a literal sense, we are capable only of thinking of our own self, not responding to anybody's need, only looking inside to our own needs, own desires. So we are as infants not even capable of realizing that other people have their own needs, desires or maybe their internal life. That is narcissistic thought. And many of us do one point or the other. The narcissist I know best would stand in front of a mirror practicing giving compliments. Why? Because they saw this was something people did. But once they felt no appreciation of others or of their abilities, which in an addition to being beyond their emotional capabilities would imply being inferior to the other person, being paid a compliment. They had to practice in front of mirror because the whole concept and practice was foreign to them. Given paying compliments is completely contrary to how they feel. Why? would they want to do so because they were much wanting others to believe they are normal and they want to believe that they are normal all the time since normal people give compliments they see the need to learn to do so too if you have compassion for a narcissist you move into a category an area look but don't touch smile but don't talk that is the zone that you get into. In other words, before you work on your compassion, recognize the reality. It's just an arm's length distance only. Compassion falls in this particular category. Narcissists can learn to mimic emotions and actions of empathetic people, but they cannot actually feel the underlying emotions as they are emotionally immature. They're not stupid people. If they are told that they have gone wrong somewhere, they would learn, but it takes time. They feel emotions up to the emotional level of the age at which their abuse arrested their development. Over time, ideally, we learn empathy. Empathy is the ability to understand that other people are just as real as we are. To understand that other people have needs and desires and to be able to imagine what it is like to put yourself in someone else's shoes and see things from their perspective. As we grow up, 
it becomes natural to most of us but only to a certain point most people never become really good at it we empathize with people we like or people who are part of our group we don't empathize with people we don't like at all compassion and pity aren't the same thing at all a person practicing compassion follows the golden rule she treats you as she would like to be treated by others if she were in your situation a person practicing pity look for an example of failure in you which may or may not exist to feel better about themselves so compassion embraces and pity rejects that's the basic difference between compassion and pity before we talk about compassion let's first talk about empathy empathy goes beyond compassion in that we identify with the other and feel their issues and their sufferings as if ours it is high sensitivity towards others a powerful feeling of oneness simply put it translates into he suffers i suffer compassion brings you to help others by humane aptitude or by consciousness or by moral or spiritual values or all combined together without necessarily feeling their pain or the issues or putting oneself in their shoes with compassion there is the factor of us being in a better position hence we help with empathy we don't feel being better we help we hug we cry we lose sleep etc etc because we live it with the others compassion is the ability to put ourselves in someone else's shoes imagine things from others perspective and then to feel kindness for them and seek understanding of them even what they do is harmful to us goes against our needs and desires compassion is empathy on steroids it's the ability to understand the view and perspective of someone we don't like or someone who's doing something we think is bad compassion requires that we have good personal boundaries that is that we are able to advocate for and defend our own needs if you can put yourself in someone else's shoes and view them with kindness and understanding even if their needs are contradictory to your own but you can't assert or advocate for your own needs you risk allowing them to take advantage of you or becoming codependent compassion lies in viewing someone in the best possible light understanding their needs looking upon them with kindness all about allowing them to manipulate control or abuse you you have to be able to understand and even value someone else's perspective without becoming a doormat the most compassionate people tend to have the best boundaries so the essential prerequisites of compassion are empathy boundaries and the willingness to see others in the best possible light even when they are being hurtful not an easy combination which is why so few people are compassionate an example of compassion is compassion for an abuser most people will say things like a guy who abuses his wife is a monster and abusers are just bad people the truth is abusers aren't monsters they are human beings and abusers don't abuse because they wake up one day and say hey i know what i want to do today i want to become an abuser abusers abuse because they are in pain they are looking for an answer to their pain and the answer they come up with is in control they abuse people because they need control they need control because they are suffering empathy is what allows you to imagine yourself in the abuser's position compassion is what allows you to understand that an abuser isn't a monster an abuser is a person who is in a genuine pain boundaries are what allow you to assert that the abuser should not be excused because of it that yes the abuser is in pain 
but abuse is not okay and the abuser must still be held accountable for it so why do any of this why would you want to understand the perspective of someone who is doing something harmful because compassion is what stops you from doing horrible things to an abuser controlling others seems like a reasonable way to deal with his fears pain and insecurities because the abuser is acting without empathy or compassion the abuser does not put himself in his victim's shoe the abuser feels pain when the victim doesn't obey his control but the abuser does not look at the victim with kindness and understanding the abuser does not try to comprehend the victim's needs nor understand why the victim is restricting his control abusers do not believe they are monsters many abusers see themselves as victims not abusers compassion is the tool that lets us avoid that mistake it is the thing that allows us to connect with other people in ways that help promote treating them without malice that is empathy sympathy is i understand how you feel empathy is i feel how you feel compassion is how do you need me to help you sympathy your friend had a fight with her husband she is crying you cry with her empathy is your friend has a fight with her husband she is crying you get into her skin and understand what exactly is she crying for hurt about at that minute you are her you feel her helplessness which makes her cry and compassion is when without passing judgment you help her solve her issue because you feel sorry for her state if you know how to help solve it for her i think i have said it all so now it's your choice to be compassionate to empathize or maybe sympathize but pity don't please thank you